So we've talked a little about what it means for a reaction to be at equilibrium. But if we can't see any changes at equilibrium, how do we really know when it's been reached? The equilibrium constant is basically a number that tells us what we should expect to see when the reaction is at its normal equilibrium. This means the ratio of products to reactants when we're at the point that they've stopped changing. First, briefly inspect this simple two-way reaction. The four chemicals that we've got are A and B on the reactant side, and then C and D on the product side. The lower case letters simply tell us the ratio of moles of each of those reactants and the products we have. For example, if this little a were a 2, we would have 2 moles of chemical A. We can now take this and form something called an equilibrium constant, which we shorten simply to K sub C. Every equilibrium constant looks more or less the same. When we place those square brackets around something, it immediately means that we're discussing the concentration in moles per litre of that particular chemical. What you should be able to see here is that we've got a fraction. On the top is the product of the products on the right side, and on the bottom is the product of the reactants on the left side. What about those powers? If you look again at the original reaction, you'll see that the small letters represent how many moles of each chemical we have present. So we need to raise those concentrations to the power of how many moles of those chemicals we've got. 2 moles of A means A squared, 3 moles of A means A cubed, and so on. Let's look at what the equilibrium constant would look like for our ammonia reaction. The original reaction was N2 plus 3H2 reacts to produce 2NH3. So our equilibrium constant is going to look like this. K sub C is actually a relatively simple idea, even if it frequently comes across as looking hideously complex and ridiculous. Now that you've got an understanding for what Kc is, it's also important that you can predict how it will change when we change the conditions of the equilibrium. For the sake of simplicity, let's say that the number of K sub C for this reaction is 1. Now suppose that we decrease the temperature. How will K sub C change? In fact, knowing the numerical value of K sub C isn't even necessary in order to predict how it will change when we increase the pressure. For example, we already proved in the last section that decreasing the temperature is going to shift the equilibrium to the right because the back reaction is endothermic and the system will try to use up the excess heat that we've added. This is going to result in us having less H2 and N2 on the left and more NH3 on the right. We can visually illustrate what this will do to Kc with some simple arrows like this. If the numerator of the fraction increases and the things on the denominator decrease, then the overall effect on the number of K sub C is that it will increase. K sub C began at 1, so even though we don't know by how much the concentrations of the chemicals changed, we can say with absolute certainty that the new K sub C we end up with will be more than 1. Utterly fantastic, people. In the actual exam, you will be given numerical values, which tell you about the nature of the equilibrium. If K sub C is very small, as in less than 0.001, this means the reactants are favoured. If K sub C is middling in value between 0.001 and 1000, there is a comparable mix of reactants and products, and neither is significantly favoured. But if K sub C is very large, greater than 1000 say, products are favoured. Now what about the effects of other equilibrium changes on K sub C? Well the funny thing is these don't actually have any effect. Changing temperature is the only thing that will change the value of your equilibrium constant. And if you think about this for a while, you can probably puzzle it out. The other changes are all about changing concentration, even pressure, your changing volume and changing number of moles, but what's C but N over V? And of course the equilibrium will shift to minimise this change. This means if you add a load of product to the reaction, the equilibrium will shift to produce a load more reactant. And the K sub C ratio of product over reactant won't actually change. 
because any change made to the reaction is always compensated. So remember, if you want to change your equilibrium constant, temperature is the way to go.